exposing inner treasures. It's going to be a short one. I got about 15 minutes or so. Exposing inner treasures. Exposing inner treasures. Praise the Lord. Last week we spoke on the unique solution provider. The unique solution provider that you are born for a particular problem to solve. Everything is created to solve a problem. The eyes are created to see. The ears are created to hear. The mouth is created to speak. Everything is created to solve a particular problem. Any discomfort and disadvantage of mankind is because people have not found their place of solving problems. Either they are running with what seems right, but it is not their element. Somebody who is busy in the uh, account, accounting in, uh, industry, and yet they are supposed to be a poet. People are depressed. People are depressed. They, they, they are in need of comedy. But someone who is to be a comedian is busy trying to balance the sheets. Where is your area of solving problems? You must discover your area of solving problems. Up until last night, I was still talking to First Lady and said, this is the statement my spiritual father taught me. And I adopted it. He that is gifted, he or she that is gifted, is employed. Many are frustrated because all they have is skill employment and not destiny deployment. Blessed with a good voice, but still trying to make money as an engineer. The voice for public speaking, for singing, for poetry, for whatever, but you are hung up somewhere because you want survival. You want survival. There are problems in this life which you are made to solve. And your rewards in life will always be in the place of your problem solving. Now watch this. This rewards may be monetary. But the greatest reward is inner fulfillment. What did I call it? Many have monetary rewards but they don't have inner fulfillment. That's why you can hear that someone... Whom probably you admired, you thought they are living large and they have money, cars, everything, they commit suicide. Why? Because they are not fulfilled on the inside. You can only be fulfilled in your area of calling. Where God, when he made you, he wired you for that area. That you can do it does not mean you should. Growing up, I could play soccer. In fact, I think uh, uh, this December, let me see, let me see, try to remember. I got registered, my first registration into playing soccer was 2000, rather 1999. December 1999. This coming December is going to be how many years? 12 years, 22 years, 22. If I had been, if I had been playing from that time, I'll be 22 years playing. I got, I still have my blue book registration card. That I can play soccer. That I can kick the ball does not mean I should do it as a lifestyle or as a, 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 a career. No. 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 This one is what I am called for. This one that I'm doing. Many are deceived by what they are able to do. You can eat, but must you be a food taster? That you can cook does not mean that you should be a chef. Is it making sense? Find the place where God thought of you when he thought of that area. Maybe when he saw politics, he now said, I need somebody there. I am making you. Hallelujah. Now, watch this. Before you were born, God understood the project he wanted to do. And to engage in. And so he created you behind the scenes. It is what I call Genesis chapter number zero. Before God created the heavens and the earth. The Bible says we were in him before the foundations of the world. Is somebody hearing? If you were in God before the foundations of the world. It means that God weighed everything. 
took note of the times and the seasons. And he weighed the kind of a person he has made you. And he knew what he has instilled in you. Abilities, inclinations, gifts, and talents. Personality. He knew everything that you are and you will be. And then he decided with this personality, with this kind of mind direction, with this kind of appetite, it will be better for you to appear on earth in 1980, in 2000, in the year 2005. So you are not a coincidence as far as God is concerned. You were in him before the foundations of the world and he put certain abilities in you. The Bible comes and says there are these treasures in earthen vessels. There are these treasures in earthen vessels. Praise the Lord. Second Corinthians 4.7 that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So there are treasures inside you. Say there are treasures inside me. Say I'm loaded with treasures. You were not born in this world to come and discover. Can I do this? Can I do that? Well, uh, what should be? That's why uh, purpose is not determined. It is discovered. Did you get that? You don't determine your purpose. You discover it. When scientists find things, they say it's a discovery. Because somebody had it, and now they are discovering it. It's like, it's like I have this MacBook here, and then I take this handkerchief, and I cover this MacBook. So, it's, a, it's an unveiling. So, when you come and say, we have unveiled it. We are discovering it for everyone to see it. So scientists discover things. They don't determine things. That's why it is not up to scientists to tell us that you can be a girl in a man's body and we can change you from a girl to a man. It is not up to them. The maker has already decided. Now we discover. We discover purpose. We discover inner treasures. Now this thing is messed up. We discover purpose. We discover inner treasures. You were not born without talents and abilities. Inside you lies greatness. That is why in the teaching of the great appetite, I said, this is why from time to time, you keep on believing that you are born for more and better things. You could be having some level of success, but you are, you are hungry for more because God made you to achieve more than you could ever achieve in this life. I put on my... Uh, uh, on my Facebook the other day and I said at the top is always there is always more space it is always crowded on the ground on the earth have you ever heard that two aeroplanes collided in the air they never collide in the air planes only crash on earth there is more space at the top the best place you can be at is on top Get to the top of your, of, of your dreams. You dream more. You can never have more. You can't say, now I am a millionaire. This is the end of it. That's why numbers don't have an end. It's negative infinity to positive infinity. Praise the Lord. God put certain treasures inside you that you must consciously and intentionally discover, expose, and deplore. Some people, now listen to this, listen to this. Some people can discover what they are born for. But their, their, their responsibility in what they are born for is what is lacking. I know I'm born for public speaking like I'm doing now, right? But it is up to me to polish the way I speak and the content that I have to deliver. Somebody can be called for public speaking, but they don't sharpen their mind. So their content is always below par. So in the soccer world, someone who can play soccer is not left to say, come and play. No, they are now taken through training. They are taken through training. The other day, we went for five-a-side, 
just as we are about to start, and we, the ball came my side. I tried to take a shot, and then I had a, 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 a muscle challenge. So I got off. Couldn't play. But I had nearly the same challenge, I think some two or so years ago. So I went to a physiotherapist. I'm like, man, I want to continue playing soccer, but this thing keeps on betraying me. What's happening? So he began to explain to me, say, you see, the reason why he even said to me, I bet you didn't take long in the, in the pitch again. I said, no, it didn't even take long. He said, exactly. Because that you had the injury two years ago, and then you didn't do anything about it. The muscles are still programmed in that injury. That's why in the soccer world, you will hear somebody's out for two weeks. But in our league here, you can play with a broken toe. Yeah, because we need you. This game is important. Yeah, it's GU versus Rollers. This game is important. It is after the game now we are saying, ah, sorry, Brian. <laughs> yeah. So the doctor said, it's a muscle theory. So he began, he said, I'm, I now must take you through a process. And then he says, now you don't feel the pain. But that you don't feel the pain does not mean the muscle is not so. And at one point he said, I'm now going to restore the pain. I'm like, ah. So he now put some things on me like ultrasounds or whatever, electrocuting stuff and brought back the pain. And then now he's curing the pain. Let me tell you something. Now the one I got is him. That you are born to play soccer means that there is a diet. There are foods you eat because if you eat anyhow, your body may blossom and you can't play correctly. If you are born to be a singer, there is a diet. You can't just be taking ice, ice, ice block and you are just chewing, drinking all manner. You get on the stage, you are trying to sing and you are trying to hit that note. It betrays you in the presence of many because you betrayed it in the absence of everyone. You must not only discover your inner treasures, but you must polish and expose them. Expose them. And then take responsibility over them. What destroys many is laziness. What did I call it? Inability to take responsibility. And they know that they know that they know if I can be a little bit serious. I can be more than this. You know you can write three books in a year. But because you are super lazy, you write half a book. Yeah. Yeah. You know that you can make 100 calls in a day. And at least get 30% of that. But because you are lazy, you make 10 calls. Don't get any like it is life. It is life. It's not always going the way you want. It is life. Discovering your treasures or your purpose is not everything. Exposing your talent is a part of the process. Taking responsibility over your discovery. Now, that is everything. Discovering it is the beginning. Exposing it is the process. Taking responsibility over it is everything. Men know what they are able to do, but they are not committed to doing it. Sir, I'm committed to this thing that I'm doing this morning. The proof that I'm committed to this is not this morning. The proof of it is what I do leading to this morning. It is my Monday, my Tuesday, my Wednesday, going through notes, researching, getting back on this, reading scriptures, is the proof that I'm committed to this. All these things of buying your wife gifts only on Valentine, you are going to hell. How can you have one day that you celebrate, you call it birthday? Birthday. Commitment to what you are to do is everything. 
You must expose the treasures that are inside you. The reason why some people cannot be committed to their purpose is because they have not exposed themselves. An exposed person can be seen by the way they make decisions. Yeah. Let me not try to be ahead of myself and get into this. I taught you before, and I'm, I thought I should bring this again. From the book of Empowering Yourself, the organizational game revealed by Harvey Coleman. Harvey Coleman. In the book Empowering Yourself, the organizational game revealed. Coleman asserts that success is based on three key elements. What are those key elements? It is what he calls the pie element, P I E element. Performance, image, and exposure. Performance, image, and exposure. That is, your success in any area is at the mercy of your performance, your image, how you look out, and your exposure. Performance is about your day to day output. Your image is what other people think of you. Or you can even simply call it your personal brand. Praise the Lord. Now, watch this. Watch this. And then now there is exposure. Coleman says performance accounts for 10% of success. That is what you do in a soccer field, a table tennis field, or basketball field, or in your account office, or at your engineering job. What you do is only 10%. And you know, this must be said because an average person likes to be seen doing stuff. It's very deceiving. Hey, single brothers, a woman is not the one you see putting on makeup and dress nicely. They can look like that. They have not made up their beds. The kitchen right now, the sink is full of, 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 of I nearly said clothes. Of, 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 I can close the and I got to try. The sink is full of plates from last week's Sunday. But when you see her at the mall, she looks everything. You are like, wow, I've never seen this, this kind God. Oh, I've never seen your kind. And then you come close, come do, say, baby, baby, only to come and realize that, ah, there is a lot of concealer. She has marks from the Sangoma, two of them. She concealed them. You can't be a man, you are planning to get married, you don't know the different kinds of makeup. Because you will see a person and think that's their original state. There are things called obtaining by false pretense. I know someone who's going to send me a message after this. Don't, please. Don't send me that message, please. We will talk one day. Is somebody hearing? People like performing. But your performance is at the mercy of what happens behind the scenes. 10% of your success is on performance. Listen to this. 30% is at the mercy of image. Now, when I come and I'm performing right now, watch this. Look at me. What are you writing? When I come and I'm performing right now, this right here is 10%. 30% is what you know about me. So if you know me and together we are against us, when I preach like this, you know what you are thinking. <laughs> we have only lived. We talk about three cameras. Can I get a meeting here? Have you ever listened to somebody talking and you know some things about them? And even as you are listening, you are like, are you getting what I'm saying? Thirty percent is what people know about you. You can, you can perform and, 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 and present very well a product that you want to sell. But if people know you as a crooked person, they are either going to flow with your performance or not flow with it based on the image they have of you. That's why one of these days I must preach on believable lies. Sir, even if you have good performance, if there is a negative word about you out there in town, even if it's not true, People will still judge you by it. 
there are some young ladies who are not married because somebody lied about you and created a negative image of you. The other day I put on my WhatsApp status, I said, the day that you are angry and you tell lies about someone and you tarnish their name, when you develop a conscience and return and repent and say, I'm sorry, don't just expect that you will come back and you become bosom buddies. Go back to the people you lied to. You, you lied to about the person and tell them, I was wrong, I lied. Because some people can make everybody to hate you and come and reconcile with you. And 99 people don't like you. The one person who made them not to like you is now back in your fold. Uh -uh. Never. You want to come back to me? Go to everybody you told I was a false prophet. Tell them I lied. Now that you came and you are saying I'm sorry, you say God told you I'm not a false prophet. Go and tell the groups. Gather them as you gathered them before and tell them I lied. This girl never committed abortion. This girl is not a slave queen. I just wanted you guys to not like her. To go and tell them. No private reconciliation. Say Amen. Because people lie about us and then they, let me tell you, people believe you based on what they have heard about you. You are watching me online or listening to me right here. The reason why you believe what I'm saying is because of what you know of me. 60% of your success is based on your exposure. Based on what? Exposure. So exposure is everything. Exposure is giving self-privilege to experience different things in life. Exposure is giving yourself the privilege to experience different things in life. Our children want to be many things that they are not exposed to. Your child can say, I want to be a, a ballerina. I want to be this. They dream in line with what they have been exposed to in God. But you see, a parent who has not been exposed can squash the dream of a child. Those are the words we heard. You want to play soccer, do something serious. Do something serious. Something that can make you a living. Ever heard such? Something that can make you a living. But right now, the world is proving us wrong that we thought intellectual brilliance was everything. A child who can't do math does not mean they are stupid. It doesn't mean that. Yes, let the child go to school, but don't think that formal education is everything to the making of a person. Don't think so. Because your children may think they are failures because they didn't get 50% in math. They are not failures. Why do we call ourselves failures? Because somebody told us academic failure is life failure. They even use this word. Education is the key to success. So when you don't have the education that they talked about, you feel like you don't have the success that you envision. So they ask the questions like this. What do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be a doctor. Now children that you want to be a doctor. Education is the key to success. Now that you don't have the education and then you can't be a doctor, it means that you can't be a success. When God wanted to deliver the Israelites, he had to expose his deliverer and put him in the courts of Pharaoh so that he can see how power operates. But if God had taken one slave and told the slave, go and deliver the Israelites out of Egypt, and even entering in Pharaoh's courts, that slave would have not entered. How would they even get a, an appointment with Pharaoh? How? Now, apart from the appointment, their mind is already messed up to think we are a people of the backside of the city. We don't belong there. You know, there are some people under the sound of my voice who have never been to the Gulf Estate. Right here. Because it is there. It is theirs. There are restaurants some people have never even, if they pass in front and they smell the food from the restaurant, they, 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 they cover their nose because we can't smell things here because it's for theirs. It's for them, not for us. What have you disqualified yourself from? Because you are not exposed. You have not exposed yourself. So you keep on dreaming small. You keep on 
performing less and reaching small. Your speed is so slow because you are not exposed. You must challenge assumptions with the power of knowledge and exposure. Challenge assumptions. Who told you that you can't sell uh, albums more than Michael Jackson? But because you are saying, hey, what was one? Only V. Even V, it's tough. He's already selling bread now. He's selling water. It's tough. It's tough. Who told you that you can't be a minister who goes all over the world and you are from this nation? Challenge assumptions. Who told you your book can't be a New York bestseller and you are writing from here? Who told you your song can reach the whole world? Look at Sinaj. Sinaj sang for many years. She never reached anything. Until one song, Waymaker. It opened doors everywhere. Sinaj goes to America, sells out auditoriums. Until one governor, I think of, uh, of Texas, gave her some honor of some sort. And then she went to, I think it's California. The governor there as well honored her. And she's Nigerian. And she's, you don't need to be from abroad to be a success. Your success is in broad. Is somebody hearing? Now, how do you expose your inner treasures? Number one, the reading culture. What did I call it? John chapter 7 verse 15 in the God's Word translation. The Jews were surprised and asked, how can this man be so educated when he has not gone to school? They said, how can Jesus be so educated and he has not gone to school? He developed a reading culture. So he engaged in what is called informal education. John 7 verse 15. In 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 16, in Common English Bible, Common English Bible, C-E-B, it says, focus on working on your own development and on what you teach. In doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Focus on working on your own development. Develop a reading culture. The more you read, the more you sharpen your vision of life. The more you read, the more you see life from other people's view. The more you read, the more information that empowers you that it is possible. My favorite reads are biographies. Why? Because biographies shows you the life of a person. How they grew up. How they had challenges. How they overcame such challenges. Develop a reading culture. Stop this nonsense of me, I don't like reading. Me, I don't like reading. At your age, you don't have a functional library. You don't have books that you buy. You can watch soapies and Netflix. You can't buy books. You are going somewhere. It's called failure. No matter what you dream. Some people have bubblegum dreams. A dream without knowledge and understanding is a nightmare in the making. You don't have a dream. You have a nightmare. Anybody can desire. But the proof of desire is the pursuit of knowledge. Relevant knowledge. Everybody wants more money. But how many people are knowledgeable financially? Desire means nothing. Everybody wants a good love life. But what do you know? You are here crying that your wife doesn't respect you. Your husband doesn't love you. But the last time you read any material on marriage was in 19 court or what? Whatever that means, we said it when we were growing up. You don't know what 19 quarter one is. You argue or reason with your spouse from a platform of ignorance. When your husband says, for example, baby, when I talk like this, uh, you always, you know, if, if I'm saying this, if I'm saying you don't listen, are you saying I don't listen, John? John, I said, for example, you don't even know what for example means. The worst people to reason with are ignorant people. Please don't marry an ignorant person. Those of you who are already married, tough. Just believe God, this person will turn around. You can't be saying my favorite reading is magazines. TV Plus. 
We are not saying read the books we read, but by all means, read. We are not saying be a degree holder. I just mentioned it. Informal education. Read. Refer to things that you have read. You sleep and sleep until you have sleep paralysis. You can be paralyzed in your sleep. That's a sign that your destiny is paralyzed. You sleep until one you appear. You know what that is? The saliva flowing out of you like that. Entering your ear. You jump as it enters the ear to wake you up. You eat seven times in a day when you have not eaten knowledge. Develop a reading culture. Buy books. In this day and age, you can even read online. You can even read online and get information there. Paul said in 1 Timothy 4.13, talking to Paul, he said, My son, till I come, give attention to reading. Give attention to reading. Give attention to reading. In 2 Timothy 2 and verse 15, study to show yourself a prudent God, a workman that need not to be ashamed, rightfully dividing the word of truth. When you don't study, you will be ashamed in life. That shall not be your portion. Paul was a dangerous reader. At one point in 2 Timothy 4 and verse 13, he was in prison. He said to Timothy, when you next come and visit me, my boy, when you come, bring me the books and the parchments that I left. 2 Timothy 2, 4, 13. Bring me the books. 2 Timothy 4, 13. When you come, bring me the books and the parchments that I left. Is somebody hearing? What distinguished Paul, even though he was not with Jesus, was his reading attitude. He studied the Old Testament. He studied everybody. He became relevant. That's why in his writings, he will be referring to them. If your knowledge has no referral, it is questionable. You can't do a, 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 a project, probably you are doing your master's degree, and then you are writing all your information that the other day I woke up, I just taught this thing. They will ask you, who are you? Who, who said this thing that is, that, that is endorsing your knowledge? Look at Jesus' reading account. Matthew 12, verse 3. He says, have you not read what David did when he was hungry? Matthew 12 and verse 5, have you not read how on the Sabbath the priests profane Sabbath and they are blameless? Matthew 19 verse 4, have you not read that in the beginning he made them male and female? Matthew 21 and verse 16, Jesus said, have you not read that out of the mouth of babes? Matthew 21 verse 42, did you ever read that the stones which the builders rejected? Jesus was referring to what he read. What have you read? I'm a world changer. I'm a world changer. You don't even know how many nations are there in the world. I'm a world changer. How many continents are there? Ah, ah, the universe is blessing me. Do you know where the universe is? Nonsense. World changer. That does not know which continent they are in. You say, when you read Sub-Sahara, you say, uh, Sub-Sahara is, is, is uh, you, see, you, see, you see when you enter and, and then you are entering the cloud. When you enter the cloud, that's sub. You are, you are entering like that. And then Sahara is when the plane now turns like this. Read. Read. Expose your mind. Sharpen your mind. Now, when you read, you sharpen your mind. And the treasures that are in you, they are now reasoned on, based on a sharpened mind. Ignorant people are always suspicious and they are proud because the only thing they have is their pride. It's not knowledge. It's their pride. They are always suspicious. When somebody comes and says, let's have this deal. I want this. I want to take your, your pro product, product and do this. No, the contract is here. No, the contract is here. No, the contract is here. Because between your ears, there is emptiness. You know, an average Christian, when you preach like this, they say, this is not spiritual. We want uh, breaking curses. When you dream snakes, what does that mean? Kanamashai, Sandos, Susulu. Because they are lazy to read. 
Let me tell you. If you are lazy to read even the Bible, you won't read it. Number two, how do you expose inner treasures? Meditation. Meditation, listen to this, is assimilating information into your mental and life system. Let me be fast right here. Into your mental and life system. Now, listen to this. It is not the food you eat that gives your body strength, but rather the food that you absorb from what you have eaten. It is not just information. It is the information you absorb. That is the information you discover the relevance of. The information you understand. Meditation is what brings understanding to information. Many have information. They don't have knowledge. Meditation turns information into knowledge applicable. They know many things, but they don't do a lot. So, that information won't change you. You must engage in the art of meditation. Where you sit down, you seek understanding in what you know. Why is life going the way it is going? As you are reading the Bible, as you are reading books, you are looking for and you are asking yourself, how is this applicable in my life? Meditation leads to imagination. What is imagination? Imagination is creating mental pictures of the future. People that don't meditate don't picture the future. What have you seen about your future? When last did you sit down and envision the future and see yourself doing well, the turnover of your company, your marriage doing well? Do you have a marriage imagination where you see yourself and your wife eating breakfast at the Bush Al Arab? Somebody's like, oh, what is that? And you are eating at the top, breakfast above the ocean. Have you, have you imagined you and your wife buying your wife her favorite car on, on, an, on an ordinary Wednesday? No birthday, nothing, no anniversary. Baby, come here. Normalize things that people make occasional. Occasional. The only time you are coming wearing lingerie is on anniversary. Any other day, Jesus is Lord. Create pictures of a desirable future. But you can only create them when you have been exposed. Listen to this. If you know that they are they built the bush al Arab on the ocean. And you come from a nation that does not have an ocean. You can build a skyscraper here. Some of you, if you were to go to New York, you may collapse. Because the buildings are so tall, when you look at it, you can't see the end. There are some of you, even eye towers, and you are told you are going to the 20th floor. You start having a headache. 20th floor, headache. How much more when you are in Chicago and you are going to the 95th floor on elevator. The elevator goes to the 45th floor and you come out, enter another one that takes you to the 95th. It, it, is, this, it is this escalators at, at airport junction that, that are giving you headache. And then you sit on the... Watch your life. You are not exposed. You are not exposed. You can only imagine what your mind has seen possible elsewhere. Now that I've seen Bishop Wedepo has been able to build 50,000 seater by the grace of God. Pastor Paul Enenche, a hundred seater, 100,000 seater. Now Pastor David Tipium is completing 120,000 seater. And from Nigeria, Noha. A place where one dollar is equal to around 400 naira. And your own one dollar is equal to about 11 pula. From that economy, it is possible. It is possible. It can be done anyway. Meditation. Finally, number three, learn from others if you want to expose your mind. The Bible says in Hebrews 6 and verse 12, Be ye not slothful, but be ye followers of them who through faith and patience obtain the promise. Hebrews 6 and verse 12. Don't be slothful. Followership does not want to work if there is no active engagement. Lazy people can follow because followership is a full-time job. Sir. 
is a full-time job. Learning from people is a full time. Don't be so proud you can't ask questions from others. Somebody knows what you need, ask. Sir, as I entered ministry, I studied my nation very well. I realized if I'm going to do ministry, as other pastors who came before me, we will never make it good. BF started going around the world. Sir, I did not know anybody in the United States of America. Day I decided I'm going to America. It was December. I decided that February I climbed on the aircraft, fly Emirates. Did look? I went to the embassy. I applied for visa. I said, if you can just give me three days, I'm fine. They gave me ten years, multiple entry. I went to the U.S. I didn't know anybody. Maybe me. I even hired a car. I said, when I get there, I will drive. When we to get there, they asked me. They said, do you have an international license? I said, I don't have. They are left hand drive. You know how I learned how to do left hand drive. I, I was playing video games of left hand drive. I said, if you turn here, you turn like, you go to that side. I said, I will drive in America. If not that, I didn't have, I didn't realize that our, our, our license is Sadek Rizim. Some of you don't know that. America is not in Sadek. I entered the United States of America. And I did not know anybody. Sat down to watch Bishop Jakes. From that America, I went to Dubai. I taught myself around Dubai. So how Bishop Jakes was doing things. I left, I went to Nigeria. Because Nigeria is holding the greatest move of God in this season. So Bishop Oyedepo. Look, every time I'm in Nigeria, I go to the places I know they are doing well. I've been to House on the Rock of Pastor Paul Adiferasi. I've been to Pastor Sam Adiyemi of J-Star. Everywhere you can think of, I will go. I will go. I will take Pastor Chris to Ekulume. I will watch him non-stop. The spirit of excellence entered me. When I would watch Pastor Chris to Ekulume, I'm like, ah, look at the stage. Not even a footprint of somebody who was walking on the carpet. Ah, what kind is this? The man is dressed and he looks clean, sharp, sharp. Like, like, clean. Like, ah, ah. He even applies lip gloss. His nails are done. His hair, his hair has permed it. And I, ah, ah. I'm thinking of doing my own too. <laughs> Say, look at this man. Shoe on point. Everybody seated down. The first five rows of the pastors. Everyone using tablet. Nah, nah, I don't know who you are. Nah, nah, I don't know you. The ones I envisioned are not, they are not writing with a big uh, pen. <laughs> Spirit of excellence entered me. Have you exposed yourself by learning from others? Sometimes you can get a job in apprenticeship not because they pay you, but because you want to know how do they do things here. I went far and near. I went far and near to expose myself. You go for research. You go for research. Checking on relevant information. And finally, if you want to expose your inner treasures, connect to God. Do what? Job 33 and verse 4, he says, The Spirit made me. But the inspiration of God gave me life. The Spirit made me. But the inspiration of God gave me life. 33 4 of Job. The Spirit made me. But His breath, breath there means inspiration. His breath gave me life. You want to be exposed? Connect to God. He's the one who knows you. When you talk to Him, He will show you things. He will expose you to things. In fact, he is the one to give you favor with the people to learn from. I have favor with Bishop Jigsa. Serious favor. I have favor with Pastor Matthew Asimolo. I went to London to go and learn because they have a premier conference called International Gathering of Champions. People come from everywhere. I've been to that conference to sit down. What do they do in between conferences? Look at the way. So when you come here, let me show some of you. When you come here at TDJX and you are seeing the way we welcome TDJX, and then we are like, you see, our media team did a very beautiful job. What did they do? They did a, a Google map that now we need a man who can solve these problems. And then the Google map now was it. And then it zoomed in on the potter's house. Like, like real one on the potter's house. And they said, we have found a man. 
Steady Jakes. And then they started talking and talking. And then they said, ladies and gentlemen, with a standing ovation, let us make welcome for the first time in Botswana, Bishop D.D. Jakes. I saw those things in London. That is called e-welcome. Not where you are just standing. Bazalan. In our midst, is a man. This man is a man. When he please get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. There is a man. Ah, I don't want to talk more. Let me not talk more. Ah, Bishop, you, you better come here, Bishop. Ah, Bishop, come. Ah, Bishop, come. What's a Bishop? What's a Bishop? Ah, what's <laughs> Ah, Bishop, you are here. Bishop. Uh, thank you, Bishop, for coming. <laughs> I saw all of that in London. Like, eh? You know, Bishop Jake saw it. I was in a meeting with him at the Essence Festival in Deben. And as we sat there, he had his um, vice president of TDJX uh, Enterprises in the movies and all of that. He said, man, I can tell you how many chips these guys had. I can tell you how many cameras they had. They had some LEDs. And then when they were welcoming me, now they had this thing. And then he zoomed on, on, on Potter's house. Can you believe that he zoomed on our church in Dallas? And he zoomed on us. The man remembered everything about it. He counted the number of cameras that were in the service. Because he's in the movie industry. Are you exposed? You want to be the best singer in this nation or in the world. What are the best singers doing? What are they doing? You want to be a best author. What are the best authors doing? Expose yourself. I close here. Steve Harvey said, You will think business class is expensive until you experience it. He says, when you enter an airplane and you pass through the business class, he says, the seats are big. And they are. They start serving you while the plane is still parked there. And then they, I mean, the treatment is world class. He says, but in there, you will see people. Pastor Matthew Ashmo says, one time he was flying with Ali Kodankoti. The man was preparing for a meeting in London. They were coming from Nigeria. While others were sleeping, Ali Kodankoti was working. Richest man in Africa. You fly Emirates, let me tell you something. You book to take a shower in the air. 45,000 feet above ground. And what are you doing? You are taking a shower there. Some of you can't even take a shower. Eh? No feet above ground. Here, no feet above ground. No feet. You are no feet. Now, in the air, you'll be like, hey, my body mata and peta wanadi khadima. Imagine, you may pay 100000 to fly from here to the U.S. And on economy, you could probably pay 10000 But let me tell you something. You may be in the same flight, and somebody may say, we are going to arrive at the same time. Uh -uh. We may arrive at the same time, but with a different exposure. With a different exposure. There is so much God put in you. And God is not responsible for how it is manifested to the world. It is your responsibility. There is no one born to be great or small. Your greatness or your smallness is at the mercy of your personal responsibility. Stop hating rich people and successful people as if they took something from you. Stop calling them corrupt. Yes, some people may be where they are by corruption, but others took responsibility. Expose yourself. You can be bigger than where you are. Expose yourself. You can't be in Haburoni from January to December. And you say you are alive. The only thing that nobody moves out of is a grave. You are in this city, January to December. Is it your coffin? Is it your coffin? One time we went to Joburg. As we got there, we were there for a conference. So we flew in, hired a car. And I told First Lady, I said, okay, this is the car that I've hired. We get inside. Now, let me tell you something. Now, you, I'm going and you're telling me I should hire the diaries. Move from here to there. Never. The devil is a liar. Sir, I have paid for my mind to be where it is. I have paid. 
I know people who won't give you audience if you are not presentable in a certain way. They won't give you audience. In fact, right as you enter the meeting, they are looking at you from top to bottom. Don't tell me I'm not naked. They look at your shoe, they know this shoe. You can't do business with this one. It's very hungry. They look, look. They look at your watch and they are like, ah, it won't cut it here. They look at your makeup and they are like, mm, mm, mm. it won't work here. It won't work here. Because they are seeing your, 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 your this thing, what do you call it? The, the, the eyebrow pencil mark. It went beyond a little bit this side. And then you forgot that you put on makeup. You did this to yourself at one point. Because you felt that there is, a, there is a fly on your cheek. And then you were like, and then they are seeing that you have four lines here. They are like, there are people who look at your wig and they are checking, is it well ironed? Is it well manicured? Is it, is it well, is it well? They, they are watching. Sometimes you say people close doors on you. They close doors on your image. They close doors on your lack of exposure. So when people ask us why we dress the way we dress and we put emphasis on it as a church, it's for a reason. Because we want you to be the best of the best. An average person doesn't even have anything that can impress anybody. University students finish at the university, they don't even have corporate clothes, not even a suit for, 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 for interview. They don't. Exposure levels are zero. When you do things, let it show somebody that you have put some thoughtfulness. You have gone an extra mile. Now I can even show you what Harvey Coleman said. So it shows you that I did, I did not just wake up and say, you're not treasure. A man studied. A man studied. When you are singing, let us see that there is an extra mile you have gone. You remix that song. You've been doing the same song since three years ago, same way. For three years, same thing. The only thing that is like that is a grave. You mean you can't change dance style? Dance style can't change. We have had Kwaito. We moved, there was a house. Now it's Ama Piano. You! Evolve! Grow! Hit a note you have never hit before. You are protocoling. Let us see progress, improvement. Mm -hmm.